short term, the way we saw that is obviously the company, okay, the uh, contact center uh, organization, they have to react quickly to send their uh, their home, their agent home. So uh, thinking about increasing the number of agents was almost impossible because you have to think about the training. Okay, suddenly you have the, almost the panic that you have to send the people home and you, you're trying to hire people at the same time to uh, be able to answer more calls. I don't think it made sense, I mean, it made sense at the time. So really, we didn't see an increase in terms of number of agents in the contact center. But what we, we see is really like to trying to divert the call, okay, to self-service, okay, self-service being a chat bot. IVR, IVR has been there for years, okay, how can you use IVR more efficiently, okay, to serve the customer and take some of the calls. So more and more on the short term, what they, they, they realize is that, okay, the other channel will help us, but also the cell service. So chatbot, web chat, the, the, the web chat, voice bot, IVR standard IVR. So this is an impact that we see uh, in the uh, in the market. That so I think that now the the work from home aspect is is no longer going to be um, you know no longer going to be an option anymore, especially within the contact center. If we look yeah, at I agree. prior, you know, if we look at prior to the pandemic, uh, I would say that for the, I don't know if you'd agree, but I think for the most part, somewhere between ten to twenty percent of the agent workforce was home-based. Um, obviously, you had some that were slightly higher and some that were slightly lower, but on average, it's probably somewhere between 10 to 20%. I think that in the long term, um, that aspect is just gonna go away. I think it's, you're gonna see a much, much bigger presence um, you know, from, from work at home. And then the other thing is that I think, like you alluded to, uh, in the short term, they were looking for you know, the quick fixes in terms of digital presence. But as you know, you know, we've had a lot of discussions with customers about chatbots and about AI and things like that. And, um, you know, everyone was, uh, you know, gradually, I would say, playing around with it within their own sandbox. But I think now those platforms, uh, the chatbots and the self-service and all those things are going to become uh, much, much bigger and uh, have probably increased in terms of priority, in terms of budget funding within our customers, because those are going to be the channels down the road, right? We're going to look for other ways to automate, other other ways to, to, to serve the customers and things like that. So long term, I would say the biggest aspects is the, you know, the work from home aspect um, that it's it's got to be seamless and it's got to be seamless from a management standpoint too. Uh, like we said a little bit earlier, you know, they have to be able to monitor, manage, report, uh, produce KPIs, and then finally be able to manage the customer journey across all those channels, um, you know, to get to get customer feedback. So, I, I think those are the big the big changes we're going to see like down the road. That's that's you know? Uh, on the long term, uh, going on the assumption that the contact center would be more uh, remote worker, uh, you know, we need to uh, focus also on the employee experience, the employee experience or the employee engagement. Okay, you, had, you talked about it in terms of monitoring. Monitoring, yes, okay, making sure for the management, okay, they have the right uh, performance level but also for the employee that they like what they're doing, okay? And even though they're alone at home, they feel part of, a, of, a, of, a, of the entire organization. Uh, and then being, meaning that they need to see their performance, they need to have more tools to help them out, to, do, to be more efficient, to follow up also on their, uh, on their, uh, techno, on their uh, performance, also being able to communicate between each other. So all kind of contact center tools that will help Okay, the communication between them as well will be uh, very, very helpful. So it is something that uh, I think personally that uh, we should look at in terms of looking, yes, at the customer journey, let's call it the employee journey within the contact center and looking at the process, the process, type of people that you're hiring, all those components that goes before the technology. And I, I think we can certainly help on that, uh, in that case. So that is something that has COVID we should um, uh, we should be looking as well to help on a long-term basis. Going back to, to that is the the cloud. I think the uh, the cloud 
more than ever, okay, some of the companies will move to cloud, okay. Well, will they move the entire contact center solution? We don't know, but they will move, okay, to complete their offering, uh, not their offering, but they, the technology or the solutions and they need to be able to provide the good customer service and also the employees, uh, the employee service as well to have the right technology. And the easiest way sometimes to do it will be to uh, by using contact center uh, solutions or software coming from the cloud. On our hand, we're looking at all kind of chatbot, chatbot tools, uh, chatbot, uh, uh, IVR components in the cloud. Uh, and even ourselves. I mean, we're uh, not only we have been offering that for uh, for years already in terms of offering cloud-based solutions, but we're just coming up with our own cloud-based solutions to maybe tackle a market that was not really tackled, really like a smaller, smaller to mid-sized market that of companies goes just going back to those companies that didn't feel they need the communication solutions. Uh, that maybe now we can offer. So we uh, we just put together like an offering now. It's uh, live. It's in production. So that is something that uh, in the market very quickly. That's how we pivot the organization to be even more cloud ready than than ever. From a service aspect, the first you know the yeah. first things that we wanted to do right from a from a pandemic standpoint was respond to 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 the customers in terms of what can we do to help. So we were, um, if you look, um, if you look on social media and things like that, we were probably one of the first ones, I think, within a span of five days, um, to turn around with uh, two different solutions that we introduced to our customers, so that number one, they could have agents work remotely uh, for those that, and those are probably some some technical technical details that some customers were able to do, and then others needed a. Uh, some more, some more set up because of VPN access and things like that that they need for, for their agents to have. So we have solutions that we deployed, like our remote login that we deployed. Uh, we also deployed another solution that would allow to agents to make, um, agents or anybody within the business for, for that matter, to make quick changes to their IVR for uploading of new messages and things like that. And some of these products we actually gave away for free um, just to try to help uh, customers out. Um, so those were things that we did, and then obviously from the support side, um, that that's you know, uh, you know we were still responding to customers, so there was no issues there. But obviously we had a huge peak in terms of you know customers that were just asking questions, wondering, okay, so how do we do this? I know we have this capability. Um, let's run through through the scenario. So I'm I'm glad that we you know we were obviously hit hard on the support side in terms of calls and emails and things like that, but we were able to respond and all of our customers um, you know continued continue operating properly.